Welcome to Tea Talk with Tasha. Welcome, welcome, welcome tonight. Thank you all so much for joining us. Hello to you all on Facebook tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so happy to have you here kicking off the year. It's January 2023 and we are well on our way. And I am excited about what God is doing in this season, in this hour, in this month for his people. So I'm so excited to have you all joining me tonight. So come on in tonight. Let us know what you're sipping on tonight. All of you that are on Facebook Live, definitely put in the chat what you're sipping on. Send up the likes and the shares and the hearts and all of that so that other people can know that we're on and that they can join us. So so excited, so excited, so excited. Greetings, Dr. Cynthia. How are you doing tonight? Happy New Year to you. I am fine, beautiful. I'm here. I got to be on speak. Um, no video, but I wanted to be supportive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Cynthia is currently uh, in school at uh, Howard University. So I am so excited for you and what God is doing uh, in and through you in this season and in the future to come. I love and appreciate you so much. She's a powerful, wonderful, powerful woman of God and has an awesome ministry. So I'm excited to see what you're going to be doing this year and to be able to uh, partner with you and support you as well. So we just thank God. We thank him. We thank him. We thank him. Love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> love you. Love you. Love you. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. God is faithful. He is so faithful unto us. And so I'm just excited to um, have the opportunity to share with you all tonight and to hop on here and talk about, you know, what God is doing and all of that. And so thank you all so, so, so very much. I think some people are in the um, waiting area, so they will be hopping on in a second so we're excited but welcome 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 so i am sipping on a green tea tonight and i know a lot of people are uh fasting so for those of you that are fasting i uh, definitely encourage you to get some type of green tea or a detox tea uh, if you go to the tasha's teas website it's tasha's teas.com and it's spelled just like my name t-a-s-c-i-a and it has an S, that's Tasha's Teas, T-E-A-S dot com. So go to the website. Uh, we have some new teas there, some new products. There are cute little uh, tea steepers uh, that you can purchase. We also have the stainless steel straws. Because I know a lot of people like, I like drinking tea and coffee, but it stains my teeth. So you can definitely get a stainless steel straw. It has the rubber tip on the end so that it does not burn your lips. Uh, and that's really good for drinking uh, hot products or even um, cold products. Anything that you think will stain your teeth, I encourage you to use uh, stainless steel straws. And so tonight I am sipping on the green tea. And uh, like I said, it's definitely good for just detoxing and just cleansing you know, your system out. It helps clear up your skin. And once you get rid of a lot of detox and um, waste in your body, you'll see that you'll begin to, you know, lose weight. And you'll also see that your skin will clear up. And so um, I encourage you have a, a cup of green tea or detox tea, and it will definitely just begin to clear up your uh, skin and rid your body of a lot of toxic waste and prevent buildup. So I encourage those uh, that are coming off of a fast to definitely uh, make sure you're drinking um, a hot uh, tea or even if you're doing all water, you know, some people are fasting all water, drink a hot cup of water to just flush out your system. If you can do that every morning and every night, and if not in the morning, at least do it in the night. Um, as we are in the winter season, it's really good to take a hot cup of water and just breathe over it. Just, you know, take deep breaths over a hot cup of water that helps to open up everything just so you can, you know, breathe throughout the day and clear out your lungs and so forth. So definitely go to the website, tashasteas.com 
to check us out, get some green tea, look at the other teas that are on there. There's ginger tea, there's the hibiscus tea, there's the sorrel tea. So it's a lot of different uh, teas on there that are really good to support your uh, body and your immune system. And especially for those that are fasting, some people are doing the 40 day fast, some people are coming off of the 21 day fast, whatever it is that you're doing, I encourage you to definitely get the uh, detox tea, okay? And my cup for tonight, because I want to just encourage people in this season, encourage people in this year, we get really excited as we move into the new year, right? And in a matter of time, we get discouraged, okay? But my tea tonight says you are an amazing woman. And so for all of you coming on and for all of you that are on Facebook, I want to say to you that you are an amazing woman. And even for the men that are out there, you are an amazing man. So I want you to be encouraged. And so my word for tonight also is encouraged because in this season, I am making it a point to encourage those that are attached to me, encourage people that I meet along the way, because a word of encouragement, I'm telling you, can and will change a person's life. We have so much that we have going on in this season and in this hour, and just, you know, in, at the start of this year. And you never know one word that you can say to someone, telling someone that you love them, giving them a hug, sending them a scripture, sending them a worship song, or just taking 30 seconds or a minute to pray with someone, I'm telling you, it will encourage them. It will change their life, okay? It is life in the words that we speak. We have to believe that there's power in our tongue, that it brings life or death. And so I challenge you and encourage you to speak life to people as people have spoken life to you because God is love, right? And so that's my, my challenge for you this month and throughout this year, encourage people, encourage them about the promises of God, knowing that those promises shall come forth in this year. We shall reap a harvest in this year. He is answering prayers that have been hidden in our hearts and those things that we haven't spoken of, but we've just been sitting there saying, God, are you going to do it? God, are you going to do it? Let me tell you, we serve an amazing God and he's going to do it. He's already doing it. And so I always encourage people to also share their testimonies. Testimonies are important. Can we say testimonies are important? Let me tell you, your testimony can and will change someone else. It will motivate them and it will help them go that next uh, step, you know, and that next mile, because oftentimes our breakthrough is right around the corner, but we'll get to the stop sign of life and stop, you know, stop, breathe and say, okay, Lord, continue to show, to show me the direction to go in, continue to carry me. And if you can just make that right or make that left or just cross over that intersection, you know, you will see that the promise is right there. It's right there. And so my word for tonight is encouragement. So I encourage you all to move forward and the promises that God has for you. So if you all could come in tonight and open up your lines and tell me what you're sipping on and tell me what your word is. Thank you, Sierra, for hopping on. I see you. Ithaca, I see you. Sister Dana, I see you. Talia, I see you. Rowena, I see you. So who's going to be the one to come on tonight? LaShonda, I see you. Who's going to be the one to come on tonight and tell us what you're sipping on? and what your word is tonight. You know, y'all gotta open up the lines and talk to me, right? <laughs> this is Cynthia. Uh, I just started real quick. Okay, awesome. Um, I am sipping on because I had an ear to hear what you just said, a, uh -oh. a, medicine, ball, a medicine ball tea. Because yes. <laughs> I was going to get a refresher. You started talking about all these warm drinks. I said, okay, I will not get a refresher. So I am sipping on a medicine ball tea. Um, and my word is, my word is faith. faith. My word is faith. Um, in my heart, uh, I'm in a season of dreams and manifestation blessings. Yes. And I understand that it is, 
through faith and act of faith that those things will come to pass when I um, wait and sit and stand and smile in a season of faith, I'll see all those things come to pass. So that yes. is what I am sipping on in my words. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that faith. If we could just have the faith to believe, the faith to stand on his word, to faith, move forward in what it is God has given us to do, the faith to use what he's placed in our hands, right? And believe the impossible, he will do it. So I am standing with you on the things that you are trusting and believing God for. So I love it. So faith, faith, faith. Who else has a word for us tonight? Who else? Who else? Who else? And I love the medicine ball tea. That is a blended tea. And I've had a couple of people that have reached out to me to blend different teas. So I do want to say if you're on the website and you don't see a particular tea, or if it's a couple blends that you want or different ingredients that you want, reach out to me and I can blend a tea uh, to your liking. I know Rowena's reached out to me for blended tea, so I've got to get that to you. So who else wants to tell us what they're sipping on tonight? I'm not sipping on anything yet. It's probably just going to be some water tonight. But um, the word I have is um, re, well, it's going to be ignite. Yeah. Yeah. So in this season, the Lord is just igniting me, um, bringing my fire back and just, um really keeping me in his hands. So I'm, I'm very grateful about that. And he's, his promises are definitely coming through. Um, so yeah, that's my word. So ignite, and you were getting ready to say reignite, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> right. I thought about it. <laughs> ignite, ignite is to set on fire. So my prayer for you is that, you know, that flame that you already have will come ablaze, that it will just really be set on fire because you are a fireball. I've seen you pray. I've seen you do deliverance. I've seen you uh, lay hands and speak and people be healed. I've seen you sing and worship. So you are a fireball. So I will stand in agreement with you that God will reignite that fire in you like never before. And you will blaze forward in what it is he has called you to do in this season. And so I'm excited for you the key for you is to keep worshiping. Keep worshiping. Uh, you are a worshiper. I don't even have to tell you to put on someone else's music to worship. You write worship. Worship just pours out of you. You have a beautiful voice where the angels just sing along and, you know, worship with you. That's the type of voice that you have when you sing. People are healed. And so my encouragement to you is to just keep worshiping, just keep worshiping. And you're going to see that fire just keep rising in you and just rising in you. And it's going to just go forth in a blaze. I just see that blaze coming off of you. So I'm excited. Oh, for amen. You. you got me blushing over here. Thank <laughs> you. I'm excited. You will go forth as a blaze of fire. Yes, yes, yes. Who else would like to tell us what we're sipping on? So we got Ignite, we got Faith, we got Encouragement. Yes. Hi, this is Ithaca. Hi, Ithaca. I am, I'm not sipping on anything either, fasting, so I just had juice and water today. Um, but it's been a, it's been some, some pressure going on lately. So my word is stay the course. Um, yes that God is, he's like, this is part of the journey, but you have to stay the course. So that is like where I am right now, just staying focused on going and not so much the pressure that the enemy keeps throwing at me. Because, yes. you know, sometimes we get them mixed up. We're like, is that you, Jesus? Or was that the devil? He's like, nah, that ain't me. I set him free. I set him loose. You see if you can handle it. So just staying the course and staying focused um to get to the end of this part of the journey amen and let me tell you because when you talk about the pressure right it just made me immediately think of the olive you know and to get that oil there is 
press pressure, you know, it's <laughs> pressed. And they will tell you, even if you're going to cook or use olive oil, you want to always get the cold press, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just see where God is pressing you. Okay. But that pressure is going to release the oil and you already have oil flowing off of you. You are a mighty woman of God. And so the thing that you're going through right now, he's going to mm -hmm. use that as a testimony, right? And all it's going to do is just release more oil that's already dripping off of you. Thank you. It's just going to release more oil. And you're, you're hearing, you know, when you, when the Lord is speaking to you, it's going to fine tune the prophetic gift because mm. that press, that pressure is just making you press into him even the more, right? right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so your eyes are going to be open like never before, and you'll be able to hear him ever so keenly. And he will get the, the victory and the glory in that because it's going to be a powerful testimony about how we started this new year and we started this new season and then all this pressure came. Right. But God. But God, but, but yes. God, but God, so <laughs> stay in the course. And I encourage everyone for that because we are so excited when we get to the new year and the new year hits and it's like, whoo, because all this other stuff hits, right? Stay the course, stay the course. We got to know, you know, the word of God says, my sheep know my voice. We got to know that we hear him, even if we can't see him, listen for his voice and stay the course. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I love that you're fasting. So definitely make sure you're drinking, get you some hot water as well. So as you're releasing all these things that you can also have that hot water just flush through your digestive system and so forth. So even if you don't do a hot tea, drink some hot water as well. So I love that. Does anyone else want to share what they're sipping on tonight, what their word is tonight? Bianca, Pastor Bianca, Dana, Sister Dana, would you like to release Sister Shining? <laughs> I believe I will go. <laughs> um, I haven't been sipping on anything really either, trying to drink more water. But I will say I've been eating a whole bunch of humble pie. <laughs> As I um, press towards the high calling of Jesus Christ, I'm really trying to learn how to be the correct mouthpiece for God. That's pretty much where I am like right now. And Tasha, you know that. You know that firsthand, sis. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at right now. So your word is, is humble? Yes, ma'am. A whole lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> to be humble, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of times is when God uh, has us go through different things, you know, we call it a humbling experience. It's like, okay, I need you to have a seat and humble yourself, you know, and uh, my thing is, God, thank you that, that I'm humble. God, you know, you want to keep yourself humble so that the Lord does not have to humble you. So I'm glad that you recognize that, you know. Lord, I thank you that I am humble instead of Lord, humble me. Cause you know, we don't want the Lord to really humble us, right? But um, it's always good that we humble ourselves and that we recognize, right? We recognize when the flesh is rising because that's all it is, is flesh that gets besides itself. And it's like, okay, check yourself, you know, check yourself, Tasha, check yourself, check yourself, check yourself. You know, so I'm excited for you and for every table that God will have you sit at, every door that he is going to have you walk through and that you are going to know that God opened this door, God placed this seat at the table for me and that I deserve to be here because the Lord sent me here. Mm -hmm. And you are humble. You are humble. You're one of the most humble people I know with a fire and a blaze. And so you are humble. So God bless you for that. So the words we have tonight is stay the course. That's our statement. Be humble while staying the course. Okay, God, ignite us. May we have faith to move forward and may we continue to be encouraged. And so even though we're individuals releasing these words, 
these words apply to all of us, right? We, these words apply to all of us and I write them down and I say them back because I want us to have that, you know, in our spirit, you know, that we keep the faith and that, you know, we encourage ourselves with the word of God. The Lord says that I am beautiful and wonderfully made. You know, the Lord said I was made in his image. You know, the Lord says that, you know, I am the apple is of his eye. The Lord says that I, you know, am a daughter. The Lord says that I am a part of the royal priesthood. And so we have to say these things and encourage ourselves. And we have to have the faith and believe these things about ourselves. You know, the Lord says that I am, a virtuous woman and I am an entrepreneur. The Lord says that I am prosperous. The Lord says that I shall have abundance on the earth. The Lord says, as it is in heaven, it shall be on earth. So we have to speak these promises over ourselves. Amen. So I am just excited. Hey, Tavika, how you doing? Hey, Sierra, Sierra, you're going to tell us what you're sipping on tonight. Tavika, you're going to tell us what you're sipping on tonight. <laughs> I'm drinking on some water. <laughs> everybody's sipping on that water i love it <laughs> yes i'm sipping on some water and i guess you could say i'm drinking now i guess um let's say um i'm trying to think what, what it is without um i, I guess i i'm um, just 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 Watching my walk. <laughs> so what 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 could that be? <laughs> I'm just watching how I walk. <laughs> so you could be sipping on if you're watching how you walk, you're being attentive uh, to how you carry yourself. Character. Yeah. You're sipping on yeah, character. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah, character. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just watch it now while, while, you know, what I do. Just just trying to live right, that's all. <laughs> I love it. Just, try, just trying to live right, that's all. That, that's yeah. just it, just trying to live right. And you know what, character is everything because with all the words that we're releasing tonight, you've got to have that character to line up because when you get to these places and when we arrive at these tables and these platforms and these doors and these opportunities, if our character is not together, we can blow it. People have blown it. And if we just think back over our lives, I'm sure there have been opportunities where we've blown different things because of our character. Maybe, maybe we weren't humble. Maybe we were arrogant. Maybe we were cocky. Maybe we had a lot of pride. You know, didn't want to ask for any help. Whatever, there have been opportunities that have happened or occurred in our life where we can see where, you know, our character did not allow us to stay in that position or did not keep us. And sometimes we blame it on the enemy or blame it on the devil. And really it's us. It's our character. So I love that watching your walk, paying attention to you. You know, um, God told me, hey, I opened your eyes. And I thought he was going to say, you know, so I could see the world, so I could see people. He said, no, I opened your eyes so you could see you. I need you to pay attention to you right now. I need you to look at your walk. I need you to look at the things you're saying and the things that you're doing, right? And how you are carry yourself. You know, we can pay attention to everyone else, but no, I need you to pay attention to you and, and what your reaction is when someone cuts you off. What your reaction is when someone hangs up on you. What is your reaction if, you know, someone rolls their eyes? What if you're, what is your reaction if, you know, they don't agree with you or whatever, right? What is your reaction if offend you, if they hurt your feelings, if they disrespect you, what is your reaction? <laughs> and you have to be very careful because people can take you out of character. And um, I'm guilty because we have learned a lot <laughs> within these last couple of years. So I think you're absolutely uh, right about that because um, I like to be heard and have the last word, and I like to tell you how I feel. <laughs> so I'm yes. learning. So yeah, I agree, and um, I definitely agree with what you just said. Yes, it's, it definitely makes sense. So yes, walking in a character. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and, I, and you and we. It's, a, it's something that has to be learned. I think that people think a lot of times character is taught. You know, 
people can see, they see you more than they hear you, right? Right. Um, that's why they say live by example, you know? And so I've had to learn, you don't have to have the last word. You don't have to have the last sentence. It's almost like growing up. You don't have to have the last hit. Let them have it. Go ahead. Be at peace, right? And right. so, and we we have to learn sometimes to be quiet. You know, last year, the big thing for me, God was like, just be quiet. Just be quiet. And people will take that being quiet all over the place. You know, that's that's witchcraft or that's being disrespectful or that's whatever. No, the Lord told me, be quiet. Jesus didn't go back and forth with people. No, he didn't. No, he did not. He, surely did. he did not. He did not. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah. So, you, so I you love that. So yeah, so. And, and at least you're acknowledging it. You know, we have to acknowledge our faults. We have to acknowledge our shortcomings. And that way, that's that's what uh, strengthens us. That's what strengthens us. Even with the pressure, right, Ithaca? That's what strengthens us, that we don't have to, you know, fight these battles and we don't have to have the last word. If people are watching us, you know, our children are watching us, you know, people right. that we pay for and that we interact with are watching us. People that we work with, are watching us, our family members, you know? So it's, it's in the response. It's in the response that those are the times where you have to remember that you were seated where in heavenly places. I am seated next to Jesus. So can I really respond to this? Can I really react to this? There's no place that I can go that the Lord is not with me. His presence is forever with me. So if I cut you out, he's right there with me, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you so I love it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, I love it. I love it. Pastor Maria, how are you? I see you on tonight. Would you like to say what you're sipping on tonight? Who else do we have? Today? Okay, I am in Costco. When I was listening, this is awesome. The Bible said, "Be quick to hear and slow to speak." <laughs> And sometimes we just have to, I would say me, I use me as an example. It just may be me and not the other person. I may be having a bad day, you know, uh-huh. and it's not that other person. So I have to look first, examine myself. Uh, Michael Jackson used to say, look at the man in the mirror. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, and that's it. I look at me first and not judge. One thing I can say that I'm boasting in the Lord, I will not be caught. And in the Lord for judging no one. Because mm-hmm. if you point your fingers out, the thumb is going to come right back to you. Yeah. That's all, that's all I got to say. We just got to use the wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom is the principal thing. And see, now they are getting, getting understanding. And I find yes. a lot of times people don't like to have conversations. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of just addressing it and going to the person in love. They can walk around with attitude all day long. The person they look at you, they may be in pain. Yes. This is judging. That's all I have to say, Sister Tasha. I'm trying to get this water with Cynthia. <laughs> Love you all. Awesome. awesome, awesome. So I'm going to take it that your word tonight is wisdom. Wisdom. Be slow to speak. Do not judge. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. I love that. And that's something that we all need. You know, someone said, if you leave your uh children a million dollars and they have no wisdom they'll blow it in a day <laughs> right you have to leave them you know the word of god and uh and with that, that wisdom wisdom pray for I always pray for knowledge understanding and wisdom and with wisdom you can gain prosperity you know so we i, I appreciate that wisdom I love that. 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 Anyone else want to share what they're sipping on tonight? <laughs> so think- I'm actually sipping on some detox tea. Yeah. I know you spoke about it a few minutes ago in the beginning. It's not green tea, but it's a detox. <laughs> All right. And, um, I don't know. Like, I think... The season I'm in right now is like, I feel like God has just been telling me, like, just soak up my love. 
yes. like that type of see like I'm in a very peaceful season mm-hmm. and it's just kind of like just sit back and just let God love on you Woo. so your word is love 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 God is love God is love. I love it. God is love. God is love. So Sierra is soaking on love. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Love thy neighbor as you love me. Love. (laughs) And God does want to love on us. You know, if we just sit back for a minute, and that's good when you said, I'm just going to sit back and soak up his love, soak soak up what he's pouring out on you, you know, but tonight the poor is love, you know. I love that. I love that. People say, Oh, I feel like God doesn't love me. If you are alive, you're breathing, you're speaking, you have feelings, <laughs> God is loving on you. When you woke up, God was loving on you. Can we agree to that? As you're on this platform tonight, God is loving on you. And so I love that. Show love, give love, bask in his love. You know, that's all a part about basking in his presence. So awesome, 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 awesome. So I love that. I love that. I love that. Then I'm not sure if you're in a place where you can speak. Um, and let me see if there, I know there are quite a few people on Facebook. I'll try to see if there are any comments um, that I can see. I can't see any comments. Um, Shonda, I guess we'll put in the chats for us if anyone has any comments out there, but definitely love. And so um, tonight, one thing that God did give me to share, um, I was um, purchasing some windshield wipers. I have never, ever, 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 ever purchased windshield wipers. And um, I had to purchase some windshield wipers for my daughter's car a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, we were driving and she kept saying, I need new windshield wipers. I'm like, you don't need new windshield wipers. Windshield wipers last forever. Your car is not that old. You don't need new windshield wipers. And so I was driving her car during the break and I realized she needs new windshield wipers, right? And so that just really, you know, kind of irritated me. So anyway, I went to get these windshield wipers. And in the midst of that, God just began to minister to me. And the guy, you know, came out, he put the windshield wipers on and I realized that, you know, one was bigger than the other and so forth. And I watched him put on these windshield wipers. And once he put those windshield wipers on and we began to drive and it started raining and we had to use them, it made such a huge difference, you know, in how well we could see, you know, we were no longer doing this and we could really sit back and really see. And so God just began to minister to me and just speak to me about windshield wipers. And it's just like, you know, when you go and you get your car washed, for example, you can have your car clean, it's shining. And as soon as you pull out and you start driving, some wonderful bird or pigeon will use the bathroom and release and it will end up on your windshield, right? Stay with me. We'll turn on the windshield wipers and it'll do what? Just kind of smear it. Right. And that's just like how it is in life when we're going about our day, especially when we're fasting or we're coming off of a fast. We're in a good place. We're in a high place. And then something will happen. Life will happen. And we'll feel like someone just crapped on us. A job just crapped on us. A friend just crapped on us. Family member or whatever. It just cracks on us. And we try to just take care of it ourselves. And we just make a mess right? And the Lord showed something to me. He said, but once you press that button or squeeze on that little handle and you release the water and you go to use those windshield wipers, it does what? It literally just cleanses it all up. It just cleans it all up. And he said, and it's just like your life, you know, when things begin to happen before you just jump in and start trying to clean it off, you know, Go to my word and allow me to release some water on it. Go to my word and allow me to release some life on it because God's word is water and the water is what? Life. He said, and you'll see me just wash these things away and just clean up this situation. But when we try to, you know, be the windshield wiper and do it all on our own, oftentimes we end up with a mess 
right? And then he has to come back and start after we've gone to him in prayer, after we've applied the word, you know, on the situation or the distraction or whatever the circumstance is, right? And so he said, just remember, you know, the same way how you have to use these windshield wipers properly by releasing the, the water that's in that little container underneath the hood on the windshield first, and then you turn on the wipers to clear off whatever debris has fallen on it. He said, it's the same thing in your life. When something happens and you feel like life has cracked, just cracked on you or someone or a situation has just exploded on you, apply my word to it. Apply my word to it and let me wash that all away. Let me use my word and then just wipe all of that away and you will see the outcome of it. And when you come out of that, you'll be able to see so clearly, so clearly, so clearly. So in this season, I encourage you to just those things that are, you know, staying in little areas and little things are falling here or there, apply his word to allow that water to come on it and then use those windshield wipers and just wipe it away. And you'll be able to see it was so clearly this year and in this season about what it is he's calling you to do, what he's assigned you to do, regardless of what other people say, regardless of what other people think, move forward. Learn in this season, if you don't learn anything else, to be obedient to the word of God and not to man. Our loyalty will have us messed up oftentimes with man. Hmm. And so we try to just clear things up and we make a mess. Apply that word on that windshield so you can see. We say, God, open my eyes, open my eyes. He's like, if you apply the word to it, you know, because we got the eyelids just clearing off everything. But if you apply the word to it, you can see clearly and you can move forward. So I'm, I'm excited. So who is going to, you know, apply the word tonight to every situation and every circumstance? Greetings, Pastor Walter. How are you tonight? So good to have you on. <laughs> blessings to all that are on tonight. Blessings, blessings. Awesome, awesome word tonight. What are you sipping on tonight? <laughs> What's your word for the season? Um, well, first of all, I just got back in from the gym, so I'm, I'm on water. I'm getting back in there. I'm trying to catch up, uh, uh, and stay in shape. That is. Uh, and so, um, the word for C is, is definitely what you've already said. And that's just being obedient to the word of God, allowing him to lead and not, not to, to sway to the right or to the left, but continue to push forward. Um, I, I just know that what God had just dropped upon me this year was Psalm 65 and 11, that it says, you've crowned the year with your goodness and your paths will drip with abundance. So yeah. in that, it is imperative that we stay on course. We move yeah. in the direction of which God has for us. And like you said, when things, um, I like the analogy used to, to, when things get messy in our lives, yes. things get messy in our lives, no that, that he'll wipe it away and just keep pushing forward. Oftentimes we get distracted by the mess. Yes. Don't let the mess distract you from what God has called you to do. Yes. You hear that? I said, don't allow the mess to distract you. Um, and, and even when it feels like you can't see your way, trust the process and allow God to lead you. Let me get off of here before I start preaching. <laughs> Keyword. Trust the process. Trust the process. That's for you, Ithaca. Trust the process. Trust the process of what God is, is doing with that pressure. Trust the process. Trust it, V. Trust the process of what God is doing. Delisa, trust the process. Ashley, trust the process. You know, oftentimes we're like, Lord, why me? Right? How did I end up in this situation? You know, uh, what did I do to deserve to, you know, have this happen to me? And oftentimes he's just, you know, because we say that we're going to testify, right? But you have to go through a test to have a testimony, 
we say that we are victorious, right? So you got to go from being, being a, a victim to being victorious. To be on the winning, seat, uh, winning team, you have to be playing. You have to be on the field, right? The old folks used to say, I'm a soldier in the army on the battlefield. You have to be on the field to be on the winning team and to win the race. If you're not in the race, how are you going to win the race? Trust the process. Is it easy? No. No. And so sometimes we get angry with God. Sometimes we get bitter, you know, but we have to forgive. We have to release. We have to repent so that we can move forward. Eagles fly what? Through the storm and above it. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Greetings, Delisa. How are you doing tonight? So good to see you on. Greetings, Sister Ashley. Hello, you guys want to tell us what you're sipping on tonight? <laughs> um, I am sipping on freedom tonight. Yes. I am. I have discovered that I am free in Christ. Yes. And I am accepting the fact that I am free to be who he has called me to be, not yes. what others want me to be and how others perceive me to be. Yes. So I, I'm walking in my freedom. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Walk in your freedom. And I think the key word was um, realizing that you're free. Yes. In him, we're free. And I think sometimes we forget that, right? It makes you think of that elephant, you know, that they were training that was tied to a pole. And then after they get finished training the elephant at a certain period, they untie him. But he doesn't go anywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. Because he thinks he's still tied. But no, you're free. Life will have you stagnant. Life will have you stuck. And that goes back to being mindful of the people that you are around. You want to be around people that are always moving forward and not necessarily forward, um, trying to grab a hold to material things, but people that are growing, going deeper in their word, people that are studying, people that are praying. That's why it's good to have prayer partners, people that you can fast with, right? People that you can go out and minister with, you know? We have to, you know, get with that circle that's moving forward. And then you do need those people that will give you the goals and hold you accountable to help you move forward, not with the material things for yourself, but so that you're blessed, so that you can be a blessing, you know? So it's, it's, it's keen um, who you have around you, right? The word says that we must keep the poor among us. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to keep the poor among you, you want to be able to be a blessing to them. Exactly. Right. They oftentimes say if there's five people in a room and four of them are millionaires, then you're bound to be number one. But if you're intimidated by them, if you're jealous by them, if you allow your insecurities to, you know, make you feel some kind of way, <laughs> a lot of times we cut off the very people that God wants us to glean and to learn from, you know. And so to be free means to move forward. To be free means to have growth. To be free means to, you know, come up to a higher level, you know, go to another altitude, ascend on high. You want to get to that mountain. You want to keep going deeper and deeper in the Lord and deeper and deeper in his word. Why? So you can have a fresh, fresh revelation. Why? So that you can hear the prophetic words that he's speaking to you about you, right? So that you can know what to do in your life. You yes. know, yes, yes, yes. So knowing that you are free, that is absolutely beautiful. I love that. I love that. We do have a speaker uh, hopping on tonight and uh, she will be with us in a moment. But I just love what God is doing uh, during this time and in this hour. So good to see you on Rosa, Miss Ashley, OTP, Old Testament prophet. What are you sleep? sleep uh, I'm about to say sleeping on. What are you sipping on tonight? <laughs> Hey, 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 big sis. So I would say that I am sipping on the fact that if my God is limitless, why have I been living my life so confined? 
What am I afraid of? What am I worried about? I need to live up to my limitless God. I need to live up to my limitless God. Mm, mm, mm. Live up to my limitless God. She said, if my God is limitless, why am I living so confined? Because we, a lot of times, put our focus on what we can do, right? I know I, I'll speak for me. I put my focus on what I can do, what I can make, what I can achieve, you know, how much gas I can cook, right? Not what God can do. And even oftentimes when we're praying and asking him for things, we're still only asking him for the things that we can do in our strength that we figured out in our minds that we can do. We still don't ask him for the thing that we can't do. We need to be asking God and believing him for the things that we can't do, the impossible things, so that he can make them possible because that's how God gets the glory, right? And that's how you really serve a limitless God. God, who can I minister to today? Who can I give a word to today? Who can I lead to Christ today? Who can I invite to church today? Who can I invite to, 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 to prayer today? We need to have those kind of goals. How many people can I allow God to use me to bring to Christ? Limitless God, limits, limitless God, limitless God. Whatever it is you're seeking him for, limitless God. Actually, that is so good. So this, as you write, as you all move your goals this year and your visions and your dreams, make sure you're not limiting God. Make sure you're not writing down the things that you own strength. That's why oftentimes I tell people, go back to the things that you used to dream about when you were five or when you were 10. Because at that time, you were trusting God to do the impossible. We stop dreaming. No, write your, write your dreams down. I know Dana's on here tonight. She has an awesome uh, book about goals. The vision is written. And, you know, I encourage you, you know, it's, it's not based upon uh, months. So definitely start this month. You can start next month. Go to her website and check that out and work through that, you know, because we have to have progress. We have to have progress. You want to work on reading, you know, a paragraph. You want to work on reading, you know, a chapter, but not just reading it, but studying it. Not just studying it, but memorizing so that you can really apply it to your life, right? So, you know, set those goals that you know that only God can do. Set those goals that you know only God can do. Oh, my brother's on here tonight. Hey, Dominique, what you sipping on tonight? Pastor Mark is on here tonight. Pastor Mark, what you sipping on tonight? Dr. Beverly Patton, happy new year what you're sipping on tonight <laughs> how are y'all doing <laughs> tell me what you're sipping on tonight well good evening everyone good evening good evening how are you i'm great i'm great sorry that i'm a little late today getting on that is um, okay but i was sipping on so some of your tea called Sorrel tea. All right. And I can't quite figure out the taste right now. <laughs> um, but it looked like a berry. Yes. Yes. So what is that what, supposed to do? That's the hibiscus flower. That's a, 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 the sorrel tea is what you have. And that sorrel tea is good for high blood pressure. That okay. sorrel tea is also a good uh, detox. It's really good for inflammation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a really good tea that you're sipping on tonight. And uh, people that have had you know, high blood pressure have started eating you know, pretty legs, Cynthia. Pastor Marie, oh, there we go. I was like, oh, you need to mute. Uh, but people that have had um, high blood pressure have started using that tea and drinking that tea with a lot of water. And you can see where your blood pressure will come down. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm also sipping on being so totally surrendering. <laughs> totally surrendering. Yes. yes. Very powerful. And that, you know, I used 
I always say, God, I surrender. I surrender all to you, right? Because it's, it's, it's pretty easy to, you know, mouth those words. And, you know, he'll start taking stuff. You like, oh, you can have that because I surrender all. Then he started coming for my peanut m and <laughs> <laughs> You know, then he started coming for the words that I was speaking. And I was like, ooh, right? So we surrender everything and still he starts coming for the thing that we like, the thing that we, you know, really want. Amen, so amen. That is good. Surrendering, you know, my time, you know, he's like, no, I want more than 15 minutes. I want more than 30 minutes. I want more than an hour. Stop putting a timer on me. Because, you know, I like put a timer on, you know, I got 30 minutes and I got to go here. No, 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 no. Just come hang out with me in this closet without a time. Right. Because I'm giving, I'm, 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 not, I'm giving you all the time anyway. Right. And I have the ability to redeem the time. And that just means you need to get up a little earlier. Oh, so now you're coming for my sleep. <laughs> well, we say we surrender everything. So, you know, if I need this time, then you can't get up at six. If you feel like that's going to make you late, you might need to get up at five. Yes. Or you might need to get up at four. If you're really serious about, you know, getting your temple together so you can have your time with me from four to five and then the gym from five to six, I was like, oh God, come on, come on, you know? So I love surrender, you know, and surrendering to what he wants us to do, which is not always easy. Sometimes you're given finances mm -hmm. and resources, but he is the supplier of our need, all our needs. Oh, yes. So are you going to give this up? So. I love it. 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 Let me see. Does someone have their hand raised? Minister, prophetess, Tanya, how are you doing tonight? It's so good to have you on. What are you sipping on tonight? Do we have um, Sister Joanna? I believe they said she is on tonight. Joanna, are you on with us? I am. Welcome, I'm welcome. Good evening. Thank you. How are you doing? No, we cannot see you. How are you doing? But we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just getting in, and so I'm jump. I'm trying to see how to fix this. Um, One night I was on a Zoom mm -hmm. when I was like, I can't see, you know, and they couldn't see me, but I had tape over my camera. <laughs> so a sticker oh. or something <laughs> um, for security purposes but we are so happy to have you on with us tonight and uh, we're excited about you know what God is doing in and through you and we've just been talking about what we've been sipping on and what the Lord is doing um, in this season and so I'm excited to have you um, with us Thank you. Thank you for having me. And so for those of you that don't know, and it's for those of you that are on Facebook, uh, Juwana McGee is um, one of the executive producers over at Atlanta Live. And so oftentimes when people I know, and even myself have been on Atlanta Live, she has definitely been the person uh, that has met us and ushered us forward. And so she uh, has done so much behind the scenes. She's produced um, multiple shows with different uh, singers and um, ministers and preachers and so forth that you all are very familiar with and just a very humble, 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 humble person, you know, and I would say, Joanna, you know, all these people, and you have access to all these people, but she is extremely humble, never takes um, advantage of her position or her title or anything. So I just Love that and love what God is doing and doing in and through her. She has a show, um, your encouragement for today. And so tonight we are going to definitely speak about um, encouragement. And she has a book and just so many different things that she's doing. And so I'm going to allow her the floor to uh, share what God has given her. And then at the end, um, we are going to open up the floor um, if you have any questions, because she has a wealth. I mean, a wealth of knowledge um, in so many different areas. And so I'm excited to have her on. So Joanna, we're going to release the floor to you tonight. 
Thank you. Thank you. You really made me sound so good. Thank you so much. <laughs> but no, I just wanted to um, come on and share. I apologize. That I, I don't know how to fix this to make the camera show and everything, but I apologize for that. But I wanted to talk a little bit about such a time as this. And lately, like I said, I've been listening and reading the book of Esther. Yes. And it's really been ministering to me. And so um, the scripture, this is what kept standing out to me. The scripture, Esther chapter 4, 13 and 14. And he sent back this answer to, um, to Esther when she said she hadn't been before the king. He hadn't sent for her. But yes. he said, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you are you alone of all the Jews will escape. And said, so for it, for if you remain silent at this time, re relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's yes. family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to this to your royal position for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that kept standing out to me. The positions we're in yes for such a time as this mm. so i don't know if you all have been noticing you know lately what well, i have yes. so how god has really been answering prayers like quickly yes you, you know i've i've been experiencing experiencing that lately where he's really been answering prayers quickly but we have to be um mindful of where we are right now whatever position whatever job whatever you are right now that position you're there for a time for this time god is doing some things at this time mm -hmm. and um i just like i said i've been even on my job i i was going through a lot tasha knows and because i've complained to her a lot and so but I had to go and think about what I was doing. I was not making things better by complaining. I was actually making them worse for me. Yes. So I had to go back in and think about um, what was really going on, why? Because I kept trying to move from my job as well. And I couldn't, I, I applied for other jobs, all that, nothing was happening, but I had to stop and think. And so I, what I did was I started praying. Mm -hmm. I started seeking God out and, and, and reading his word. So I started doing all of that more. And so I remember one, one of the things I was going through on my job, something like really, really heavy. I can't, I can't share that part, but it was something really, really heavy. And so I remember telling God, if you bring me out of this, I will give everything I have for you. I will serve you. I'll give everything. He did it. And I did what I said I was going to do. So that, that caused me to get in the word um, deeply, you know, um pray more and I was never a reader of the bible you know that was like that was really hard I either start reading it and fall asleep or but I was never really a reader but then I started listening to it yeah. on the way to work or wherever I go I just put the bible app on and so it started like really getting into me and and just doing some things, stirring some things up within me. And so that's when I started um, really praying. And, 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 you know, it was another thing too that happened. You know, I kept saying, oh, once we move, I'll, I'll find a place where I can just really go and really pray and do better with that. But then I had to sit there and think, it's like, I can't wait until there's a good time to do this. I had to make it happen where right where I am. So that's what I did. I um I didn't I don't have a lot of space. My place is small. So what I did, I just took all my clothes out the closet and put them. I bought a, a closet, to, you know, so I 
hung all my clothes there. And I made me a war room. For the yeah. first time I went and watched that movie after all these years, I watched it and it inspired me. So I did that. And when I tell you going in there to pray is different, there's a different kind of prayer. When you find that space just yeah. for prayer, there's a, that's a different kind of prayer. When I could pray out here, you know, wherever I am, just get on my knees and pray. That's good. But it was just something totally different about going in there. There's nothing in there but scriptures. Um, Tasha, I don't know, you sent me, you sent me something one day about my family being blessed. And this, I wrote that out and put it on the wall. And I read that every day. Wow. I have, there's nothing in there but scriptures on the wall. Um, I had a Bible in there and I have anointing oil mm -hmm. and that's it. And I, I've learned to just go through my house and yeah. pray. Yeah. I've seen things change that I've seen, um, you know, like sometimes, you know how your kids are, they'll get yeah. to acting up or whatever. But when I, I used to, when, when that would start happening, I could see it happening, but my prayer for it wasn't as good. But when I tell you, when you put that anointing oil on, on some stuff that's going on, Come on. Come that's on. different. And I seen God change the whole outcome of what I know to be chaos and toxic energy. But I, I pray from the front door up to the back door, all, all upstairs. And I saw him bring peace yes. where it was about to be chaos. What yes. I'm used to, because you know that if you don't handle certain things right, you'll keep going through it. Yes. And I was tired of going through that. So I saw how God shut that down, even on my job, you know, there's days I go in, I don't know what to expect in there. I, I honestly didn't know what to expect. I go in, sometimes I'm, I'm anxious about what's getting ready to happen. Yes. I started taking that anointing oil to work too. And so <laughs> you can see my fingerprints all over doors up in there now. <laughs> but I've seen that, I've seen the change in the people that I was had the conflict with. Yeah. I see change now. And so I'm like, ah, oh, this prayer thing really worked. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so I, when I tell you, I laugh every time I pass by that door because you can see my fingerprint, my whole hand yes. is on that door. So, you know, I, I had to put in some prayer and then my hand was oily from the oil. <laughs> so my whole hand print, but I kept saying, I'm so surprised that they hadn't seen my handprint on that door. But, and every time something start trying to rise up, I'll put that all on my mm -hmm. hand and go stick it on that door again. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just, I, um, so we have to be mindful of the position we're in right now because, you Ooh. know, and, and sometimes we do want to move, but it's not time for us to move in certain areas because there are things we need to be doing. There are people we need to be praying for. Even the people we're trying to get away from, we need to be praying for those. That, and that was my issue. I that was part. <laughs> away from these people, but I couldn't because God wanted me to pray for them. You know, because it, 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 even if I had went to somewhere else, another job, I would still deal with the same thing. So what I was, I was just going to keep running from job to job, trying to get away from something that God is calling me to do. So mm -hmm. I knew I couldn't, eventually I figured out I couldn't go to the next level or move anywhere else until yeah. God, until I did what God was calling me to do. Yes. And so that's, and now, now even there's two other people on my job, they've come together. We've all come together and started praying. Yeah. So we go in the room and we pray over the station. We pray for our families. So I'm seeing what God is doing in, in, in this time, in yeah. such a time as this. Yes. You know, we are called for 
this for a time, you know, for this time, because you, you see what's going on in the world. Yes. There's so much hate. People are so angry. You, you know what I'm saying? So um, we know that time is drawing near and there is a work for us to do right now. And so God is really calling his people, calling us to, to start praying for these people, you, you know? So that's, um, that's where I am right now. And I'm so excited. Like I said, I've, I see God doing miraculous things. I yes. said to you earlier, Tasha, about how, I was, okay, I didn't tell you this part, but I was, what it was is I was going into work and I needed to talk to my supervisor. And so I was like, man, I don't want to deal with this or whatever. So I was like, but I got to, I'm going to. So yes. I prayed, I prayed and I asked God, I'm, I'm, I'm quick to ask God to move somebody out of my way, you know, <laughs> <laughs> move him out of my way, Lord. I'm, I'm yes. going to do yes. something. And I tell you twice, I've asked God to move this man out of my way to make something happen. And when I go in, do you know, he's not there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, both times both times I wasn't trying not to right. deal with it but but you know right then I just needed him not to be in the position right to go in and handle my business and he wasn't so that's why I say I see God moving yes He's moving right now and, and yeah so it is time for us to start praying for these people start doing what we need to do for God to do what he needs to do as far as moving us to the next level on what he's calling us to do. So I just want to share that with you all. Yes. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's so, it's so powerful because we do have to ask God, you know, what is it you want me to get out of this situation? What is yeah. it that you want me to learn from me? What are you trying to deal with inside of me? And what do you want me to do for them? Yes. Because you got to forgive them. Yes. Right. Yes. And then you have to ask him, what is it that you want me to do? Because one of the things that, you know, in, in reading this, he said, you know, either you can stand pretty much for us, you mm -hmm. know, because that's the time this is, you don't know if this is the main reason why you're in this position. Yes. But if we all go down, guess what? You're going down too. Yes. Yeah. So at, at what point do we say, you know, I'm going to stand for God? I'm, 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 I'm all in, you know, mm -hmm. I am all in. Yes. I am all yes. in, you know, we, people say, oh, I'm sold out for Christ. Mm, are you really sold out for Christ? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. When the pressure hits, are you really sold out for Christ? Mm -hmm. Are you really going across the country into another state to intercede, to deliver, to pray and lay hands? Are you up 24 seven? If God says, stay up, if he says, get up and pray at two, three, four, five in the morning, yeah. are you really going the extra mile? Yes. Did you really think he gave you that position just so you could say how great you are? Yeah. What are you supposed to be doing in that position? When you're in a place of authority, what are you supposed to be using your authority to do? Yes. Yes. When we get to these high places, it's not for us. That's right. It's for him. But That's oftentimes right. we get in those high places and we forget and we've gotten so used to keeping work separate, separate, work and church separate, separated mm -hmm. or ministry separated. So you have someone right there that God wants you to minister to. Mm -hmm. but we have too much fear of even losing our job or losing that position and losing that pay to even speak what God has given us to speak to people. That's true. That is true. Yep. We'll go along with the get along just to have that comfort life. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Right. And so, you know, he, he, he just really, you know, pointed that out to me. Um, and even in chapter six, what we have to remind each other as I went back, as I went back and read that whole book again, you know, and made some other notes and stuff. And I was just so excited, you know, about what was happening because even in six, chapter six, where it talks about, you know, how the king, I can't find my notes right now, but the king went back. He couldn't sleep. 
Mm-hmm. King couldn't sleep. Yes. And he went back and he began to read the Chronicles. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And he read where Mordecai stepped up and exposed two people that were trying to kill the king. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yep. he said, what what did we do to reward him or bless him for this? Nothing. And that just jumped out yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. So and Jesus will go to the father on your behalf. That's right. And say, <laughs> that's right. Oh, what did we do to bless her or to reward her? Mm-hmm. God, what did we do to love on her? God, what can we do? Mm-hmm. What can we do to love on her and to bless her for? Yeah. 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 And even when people are coming, you know, because he was trying to kill him, kill yes. Mordecai, you know, uh, and then he went to the king to he thinking he finna get the blessing. Yes. Although he was trying to do something underhanded over here. He went to him to try to get the blessing. And so what he thought was for him and he gave all kinds of good things, march him around the city yes. in your robe, your finest clothes. And it wasn't even for him. Yes. It wasn't for him. It was for, for Mordecai. For Mordecai. And so, yeah, we have to be mindful of people who are out here trying to, to hurt us. And, but God will expose it and then give it to the person who's out there trying to do what's right so yeah that was that was good yeah come on come on come on Mm -hmm. come on come on come on so know that you know if you were alive i'm gonna say it again you have an assignment yes you have an assignment that's the roach put in there he was digging a ditch (laughs) he got a lot of good good comments he was digging a ditch for Mordecai not realizing the ditch he was digging was for himself Mm -hmm. and so many times you know people do that right and so I'm like wow so you got to move forward and be bold in what it is God has called you to do and not have any fear Mm -hmm. because he's going to reward you yes he's going to reward you he did it in Chapter six. Yes. He's going to reward you. I believe Pastor Maria has her hand raised if I'm looking at this right. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. I hope it's not a lot of noise sitting here, but this is so awesome what she is saying. And I'm looking at Esther, this little adopted kid going Mm -hmm. into the palace, not knowing her assignment was there to save her people. But we look at how I don't have, when the enemy come in as a flood, the Lord has to lift her standard. So she did not know why she was there. I believe when her uncle took her there, all this was not going on. But she was there to save her people. Mm-hmm. And I listened to uh, the, the, uh, the, I don't know her name. I'm visiting my babies, but I know her name. That spoke before then. Your assignment, and uh, Pastor Tasha said that your assignment was there for the people. Yes. My shundle. Yes. Your assignment can be there for those people. Yes. If yes. God is not going to listen to what we're saying. He's going to look at our actions. That's right. Love, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. And the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord will fight for you if you just do what he's telling you That's to do. That's right. Yes. So she yes. says, if I die, let me die. Yes. I'm going to see the king. Yes. So that is my position. Whatever I got to do. I was teaching on Sunday and I saw the rebellions of this man. I saw his spirit and I kept teaching and I kept teaching. And the Lord told me to call him today just to check on him. And he says, I apologize. He says, I was so nasty on Sunday. <laughs> you know, he said, I was a bad boy. And I said, it's okay. And I began to go dialogue the scripture with him. But I prayed. And the yeah. Lord told me to call to check on him. And that, I knew I knew what I saw. But to see, the Lord had even uh, reaffirmed the word that he gave me years ago. He said, you know what? They're going to come against you. You are the rebellious house. He said, but set your face like a flint and an adamant stone. 
And he yeah. said, well, I know you got this gift, you can do this, you can do that. I said, I have to move when God say move, you know? And sometimes we don't know the position we're in. And like he was saying, Haman, he thought that when he laid on the bed and, and, and the king saw him and he thought that he had gotten away at mm -hmm. I just, you know, when you do this and you do this, I'm going down the street, you do it. This is what you do for him. But what happened? He messed around and got hung himself. So yeah. we don't have to look at what people do yes. to us. That's if we right. hold our, if we just hold our peace yeah. and we go before the Lord, God will fight for you. Amen. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he yes. will. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm going to get off. Yes. But, <laughs> but that was so awesome when she brought out. And we just see that we are in the kingdom for such a time as this. Yes. Chaos yes. is in the land. Destruction right. is in the land. Violence in the land. Genocide is in the Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The power hey. of life and death is in your tongue. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right, you know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get out, but I just love you guys. Thank but I have to jump in on that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Bianca. I believe you have your hand up. Yes, ma'am. Which this is one of my favorite stories that you guys are talking about. It always bless me. And just like the young lady was saying, I was just about to say that death in life is in the power of our tongue. And what blessed me was the fact that that God, <laughs> that Jesus, he spoke when your enemy speaks a blessing over you. Mm. Yes. yes. You see what I'm saying? And yes. then he did not understand because death and life is in the power of the tongue. I don't see nowhere where it says you got to be saved, sanctified and all that. It, it, it's in there. So now you sitting here, you have now spoke, you have spoke life to a blessing over Mordecai. And yes. then you leave <laughs> your death which I'm sitting here saying, my God, my God. That's why you have to be careful what you say. That's right. But everything what she was talking about, how she said she wanted to leave her job and all those things. I've had so many times that I've went through that. Mm -hmm. Well, God had some times where he's like, no, because you got assignment to do. Just a quick story. Over here where I live in these apartments, they um, renovated apartments. So before the renovation, I'm on the bottom floor. Um, is a young girl on top. She was a younger mama. She had a couple, couple kids that would run every now and then, but they wasn't to the point that they would bother me. I was fine with. We had understanding. I had a neighbor next door didn't speak to me much. I was fine. We come and go. Well, we had, I met another lady that was over in another building, and God had let me know that she was like a low level witch. Like she one of the ones she witching and she don't really understand it. So I knew about that. Okay, so when we move out, they had already told us that, hey, we're going to pretty much put y'all where we want y'all. You might not get your unit back. And I said, well, Lord God, now you gave me this apartment and it's the one I want to come back to. Well, when we moved back, I was the only one in this building. All my neighbors was new. Next door to me was this older couple that I didn't know, but I used to say that she was nice nose and she was a nice lady, but if you didn't come <laughs> home, she wanted to let you know that she knew you didn't come home and what time you had come home. I'm going, gee, she, this old nice nosy lady. Yeah. And upstairs, upstairs to her was the low level witch moved up there. Well, on top of me, I got a couple who kids louder than the other kids. Lord Jesus, they sound like <laughs> racing horses. I, it sound like the drum line on top of me. I said, Lord Jesus, now I got a drum line on top of me. I got a nice nose lady next to me in the low level witch. Father God, what are you doing? And he said to me, these people are your assignments. Mm. Mm. Matter of fact, the one that's on top of me, when he lived in the other building, I used to be talking to the Lord about, Lord, why this word? I'm going pull up his hands. And every time I see him, <laughs> he got a blunt in his hand. It's like he, he do what, like he an octopus, like he got eight hands and all of them had blunts in them. I ain't never seen nobody chain smoke blunts before, but he had ability to be able to do that. And so I'm, he aggravated me. I'm just going to be honest. I'm like, yes. Why? So now he my neighbor upstairs. So when I found out he was my neighbor, I had questions. <laughs> and I went before the phone and the Lord said, they are your assignments. And then I humbled myself. Mm -hmm. And what I found out was the low level witch is a low level witch because she got church hurt. 
So God says, you got to come in there with a pure heart and you got to draw her. What you say, Tasha, with love and kindness. With love and kindness. <laughs> so I, he told me that that's what I got to do with her. Up here, he took me back to my past. This young lady up here, she is almost living my same life. I went back to when I was 20. Well, you got babies everywhere. You depressed. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know where you're going and where you, where you, where you come, where you coming or you're going. Yeah. So I did remember when the Lord told me what my purpose was. And he said, your purpose is to minister to the ones that have been through the same stink that you've been delivered from. Yes. So then it went off. Okay, that's why she here. She live in my old stink. Mm. So I got to be <laughs> able to minister into her. That girl, one day, yes. that life that you live, the Lord God gonna make it smell real, real good. Mm. So that's what I learned from her. But this lady next door that don't never talk to me, that was nice, nosy, and let me know she knew when I was going and coming. What I did not know that this lady was full of the Holy Ghost. Mm. She was a praying woman. Well, she passed away. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize how much we got so close. I didn't realize how much God had filled her heart with love for me. Wow. When she died, her husband came and said, Mama V, my wife loved you. Mm. She, he said, I'm finna get ready and move and I ain't taking nothing with me. Come over here and get everything in here you want and what you don't want, I'm gonna give away. Wow. When I went in there, every single Christian book that I had been saving up for, she had. Oh, now, wow. every single picture that I liked and been telling God, I sure want that on my wall, she had. Mm, now, yeah. She had pictures that's on the back. She wrote stuff down that I promise you the Lord had her write it down for me. It encouraged me. It's on my wall. I'm looking at it. Mm. Stuff that I had been on my budget saving for this lady had. Matter of fact, she had so much stuff. She ended up blessing three households. I blessed my niece's house and somebody else's house off of what was in her house. And here wow. I am. I moved in. I'm talking about she nice nose. I didn't even know. Not only was she an assignment. <laughs> look, she was assignment, but I was assignment for her. Did not even know what I'm going to God about. He had already set her up to be my blessing. Wow. Come on now. Yeah. Ba, ba, ba. So this is why uh -huh. God tell you don't complain. You just tell God, Father God, why I'm here with my assignment. Mm. Yes, mm. yes. Because yes. when we get up every day, one thing we are are soldiers for the Lord. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, now you meet any soldier. Just because that soldier on leaving on his downtown, his mind frame is still in war. Yes. That thought process. He don't stop thinking that because he on his downtime. Yes. That's who we are. That's who we are. So when we go forth, what is my assignment, Lord? Why I'm here? Especially mm. if it's somebody been a thorn in your side. Mm. Yes. yes. You, you hear me? I had my friend tell me, she said, V, I'm going to tell you what I found out is God put them thorns in your side for you to pray for them. That's why they sticking at you. Mm -hmm. God want them to stick at you. So you can go before him and ask him why they sticking so he can give you your assignment why he had, why he had them stick you in the first place. Because them sticks ain't coming from the enemy. I'm going to let you know that. Right. That's what I have learned about God and how he is personal in the things that he do for you for your purpose. Yes, yes, yes. God's good to us. So yes. I just want to say that's what I that's 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 what God has taught me. I'm telling you, for everything you said for such a time as this, bless my whole soul because that's my life that I'm living right now in a lesson that I'm learning right now. Yeah. It's all coming full circle now. I'm kind of getting it like that light don't came on. And I yes. get that all of that stuff was for right now. Yes, the, the light bulb. The, the light bulb. bulb. Yes. And so, um, Tasha, know I, I get happy when I talk too much. Y'all got to excuse <laughs> me now. I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. <laughs> but what she said was really good, you know, realizing that sometimes, you know, we don't know how God is going to use us to bless other people or how other people are going to bless 
us, you know, and oftentimes yeah. the thing or the person that irritates us is the very assignment, you know, for us, right? And yeah. sometimes we are an assignment for them, you know, <laughs> or rather they be praying, rather they be interceding. And so one of the things that stood out to me that you said, Joanna, was, you know, that prayer closet. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. You know, initially, um, you have these closets and we just pack them with things, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I'm going to clear this one side out to make room for my husband, right? Because, mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's, that's operating faith. So I'm going to operate in faith and I'm going to clear this whole half out for him, right? Even though, you know, I don't know when he's coming, right? And then the Lord said, well, what about me? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And so I turned that side into a prayer closet. Mm -hmm. But I had another area that I was using. But I turned that whole side into a prayer closet with mm -hmm. my pillows, with my prayer shawl, with my anointing all, with my worship music. And I'm telling you, it is, it is, what do they say? A game changer. Yeah. So when you were speaking about that, I was like, whoo. Versus the little stool that I had, the little area that I had. Mm -hmm. Once I set aside this specific area for him where I could close myself off. Yeah. It's like as the door closed, mm -hmm. he was like, Shh. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I encourage you, if you don't have a prayer closet, get one. If you have to move yeah. some clothes to the side. You know, even if you just have a, a, I don't know what size, everybody has a different size closet, right? Mm -hmm. Move some things to the side. You know, I have a friend that took her um, coat closet, you know, when you have company mm -hmm. and turned the coat closet into a prayer closet. Someone else I know turned their linen closet into a prayer closet. Find an area in your house, in your apartment, wherever you are. Yes. If you're renting a room and all you have is your room in a closet, slide some clothes over mm -hmm. set that that little area aside where you can just crawl up in there with god and give him some time where yes. you're not clocking it yes. yes i'm gonna go in here i'm gonna lay before him and whenever i come out i come out mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah right mm -hmm. and so i i love that when you said you know you you did the the, the prayer closet and you wrote things out, write things out, write your letters to God, write your words to God. Mm -hmm. yes. Find scriptures. I always say find the scriptures that apply to the prayers that you want answered. There, when they say there's nothing new under the sun, when you're really going through and you think this has only happened to you, you can find a scripture. You'll be mm -hmm. surprised from Old Testament to New Testament. Mm -hmm. You will find a scripture that applies to what is happening in your life that's right or to, to those people that are attached to you apply scriptures and read those scriptures applying it to that mm. so i love what you said about the peace because it's all about our mindset right mm -hmm. changing the mindset you have to say you know what i get to go to work today mm -hmm. i get to greet my spouse today i get an opportunity to raise my children I get an opportunity to go to worship. I get an opportunity to share the word of God. I get an opportunity to, you know, lead someone to Christ today. Change your mindset. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those words. I get to do Bible study. I get to minister. Whatever it is that he has you doing that you feel is a task or a challenge. You know what? I get to love on God's people. I get to encourage God's people. Yes. Yes. So I love that. Um, you have a book. Yes. Positive without the negative. Can Speaking you please positive. talk a little bit about that book? Uh, yes. Um, that book came from my son, my middle son. He used to go through so much. You know, he was like, it was that age where he's, he wants to do right, but then he's got friends that's doing wrong and he's trying to, you know, 
trying to play both sides of it and that's not going to work. So he used to, you know, he came to me one night and he was just crying. He said, mom, I want to do right. He said, I want to do right. He says, I'm having such a hard time, you know, and he, he would just, he kept saying, yes. he'd say something positive and then he'll say, but, and it was something negative. And he would do it every night. He'll wake me up. I had to be at work at eight o'clock. He would wake me up every night at midnight, crying. And I would just get up because I, you know, I wanted to be there for him. And so, and I, you know, I, I told him, I said, look, you can't say this and then say, but this. I say, you're speaking positive, but you canceling it out with your negative. Yes. I say, be positive without the negative. And, and, and so after that, he, he started, you know, trying to get it right. But in that, every night when we would talk, I would go and start writing, writing what we're going through, you know, what was happening. Wow. And, it, and it just turned into a book. <laughs> wow. so, but that was it. He would always speak positive, but then he'll say something negative. I say, well, that's what happens. The negative always can always cancel out your positive. Just mm. be positive and put a period there. No yes. buts, no ifs, no, just speak positive and leave it at that. And so that's that's where the book came from. Speak positive and put a period there. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speak positive. Let's all say it. Speak positive. <laughs> Speak and put positive. a period there. Speak yes. positive. It's almost like we tell our kids, don't say can't. Yes. yes. And as my daughter got older, she would remind me if I would say can't, she would say, well, you said don't say can't. Because I would say can't, you know? Mm -hmm. Be positive and don't put the butt on there. Yes. And you have to catch yourself sometimes. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. You have to catch yourself sometimes. Where are we able to find that book? Are they able to reach out to you for that book? Where can oh, we you find can that? On Amazon. On mm -hmm. Amazon. On yes. Amazon. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely make sure you put that in the chat. And I want to talk about uh, your show, your encouragement mm -hmm. for today. Yes. Yes. Now that show still is because I've, I've always, even though I was always one to beat myself up, never, you know, how you would just speak negative over yourself. That, that was me, you know, yes. but I was always an encourager. I yes. would always see good in everybody except myself. So I yes. was always an encourage. And so um, I've, encouragement has always been a part of who I am. Yes. So I, I, even, I started a ministry years ago, Women of Encouragement. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we went out and we did things in the community, just whatever. I always wanted to help people. And uh -huh. so the um the show it just came out of and still encouraging people you know just always want to be an encouragement to people so I will have guests to come on and we would just um talk a pick a, a topic to talk about but it had to be something that could encourage someone it was never the show was never about the person mm -hmm. it had to be about encouraging God's people. And so that's what that was about as well, you know. And I, you know, there was a chapter, I mean, there was a, a, a topic God kept bringing to me and it was called no matter what. And I, and I kept saying, Lord, what is no matter what? How am I going to and, and do a whole show, a 30 minute show off no matter what? And when I sat down, when I tell you God gave me those scriptures to that, um, let me see if I got it. to that, uh, I couldn't believe what he did. I think I left it at work, but no, no, here it is right here. The scriptures, I, I just want to share this with you. First Thessalonians 5 and 18, five, okay, I got 16 through 18, but it's from the messenger Bible. And it says, be cheerful no matter what. Mm. Pray all the time. 
Thank God, no matter what happens, this is the way God wants you who belong to Jesus Christ Ooh, to live. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you know, mm. when he kept giving me that no matter what. And then Psalms 34 in the Living Bible, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I will constantly speak of his glories and grace. I will boast of all his kindness to me. Let yes. all who are discouraged take heart. Let us praise the Lord together and exalt his name. So like I say, and you're right, there's a scripture for everything, even, even things you don't even think. Like, like I say, when he kept giving me no matter what, I, I kept saying, yes. where am I going to find a scripture? you know, no matter what, but yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say is yeah. No matter what. No matter what. Yes. Ooh. No matter what. No matter what. Yeah. So, but that, that's pretty much what the show, you know, is about. It's always to encourage God's people. And where can they find your show? YouTube. On YouTube, I have a YouTube channel, Your Encouragement for Today. So you can uh -huh. go there and find that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then uh, the last thing I have down here is uh, Atlanta Live. <laughs> Atlanta Live. Yeah. Uh, that's where I've met you. I've known you for some years. Mm -hmm. And I know my brother was on here earlier. He worked with you some years. And I yeah. said, okay, you're there definitely one of his favorite this is his first <laughs> night on you know uh -huh. Uh -huh. so you're definitely a friend and a favorite of his <laughs> um tell us about Atlanta Live I know uh we've had quite a few people that have been on tonight mm -hmm. and quite a few of them have met you out there as well how long have you been with them and uh just talk about how you see God moving in and through uh that show and that opportunity well, I, um, I've been at the station for seven years now, but I've been producing for, two, well, it'll be three years because I started in 2020. So it'll be uh -huh. three years next month. And, um, but that, that was an issue too, you know, and I kept, um, you know, watching people come in, leave out, come in, leave out. And I, I started asking God, why am I here? What am I doing? with this you know but my husband he brought to my attention he said you don't even realize why you're there do you I said no I don't I said so it's frustrating and yes. he said you're there because this is ministry you're looking at it as a job it's not just a job this is your ministry yes and after I started looking at it differently I said okay, I get it now. So I had to start changing things. So here lately, what I do is I get the host and we pray before the show. And yes. then the host will pray with the guest as well. But I, that's how I was looking at it as just a job. And yes. so along with everything else that was going on, like I said, my supervisor and all of that, it just became just like I say frustrating but now that I look at this whole thing differently because I was always about you know when people come on I want you to share share something that can help someone else yes. not just to come on just to you, you know to promote yourself is you know be about you but share something that someone else can be blessed by yes you know because there are a lot of people who watching um hurting and I that's that's another thing I'm always you know wanting to do wanting to encourage people even those who are watching because mm -hmm. they're they're hurting out there and they need a word they might not have anyone to encourage them so when you sit down in that seat your testimony could be yes. the very thing that causes them not to commit suicide Yes. Or, 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 you know, just be able to make them, give them a direction on what they're looking 
to do, they might be trying to find the answer to do whatever God is calling them to do. And your testimony could open their eyes to say, whoa, this is, I get it now. Yes. You know, so that's, that's what I try to do now. So I ask questions. I ask different questions now when they want to come on the show, you know, what is your testimony? Yes. What, you know, so, so that you can be a blessing to someone else that's watching because that station, you know, we can get up to millions of viewers, you know, and so you might touch only one person, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. That one person was for you to touch. Yes. So that's why, um, you know, I look at this whole thing differently now. So, yeah. Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. Just in me knowing you, the years that I've known you and just seeing the transformation and just seeing where God is taking you from and just seeing how yeah. your mindset has changed, just seeing, you know, your outlook on what God is doing, you know, yeah. yes. and uh, the platform that he has you in, the space that he has you in, mm -hmm. you know, and how he's using you in that space, yeah. right? Yes. And I know, um, just in that area, a lot of times with that being a Christian station and Christians coming to that show, we don't always show up Christ-like. We That's don't right. always behave Christ-like. And right. I know that that, you know, is what makes it sometimes challenging. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord said, you know, hey, just make sure, you know, let this be a lesson learned. When you show up, you make sure you're showing up Christ-like. You make sure mm -hmm. that you are really exuding my love. You make sure that when people see you, they don't see you but they see my light in you and so just in you speaking tonight I see his light you know shining we can't see your face but it's like we see your heart yes right yes. we have seen your heart tonight mm -hmm. we see your love for God's people tonight we yes. see the love that you have you know um for women mm -hmm. and for those that are hurting those that are broken those that are lost you know I hear it in your voice I hear the compassion that you have for people, even in your voice and just in where God has taken you, you know, so I thank you for taking out time to come out and share your testimony tonight. I know you literally just left the land alive and <laughs> ran home and hopped on. And so we are so grateful, but just in us being in this first month of the year, you know, and like I said, when we cross over on the calendar, people are excited and people are expecting these great things and great things are going to happen. But it's mm -hmm. like, if it doesn't hit at that moment, it's like that fire begins to dull. It begins mm -hmm. to go out, you know, before we even get through the first quarter, it's almost like the gym. You go yes. to the gym yes. the first week of the year and mm -hmm. it's packed. Okay. And by the next 25, 30 days, you see it go back down. <laughs> and by the first quarter, it's a wrap for most yes. people, you know, yes. <laughs> the least is laughing. You know, I have done that over and over, you know? And so, um, so even with that, and so we do that, I'm just using this gym as an example, but with so many things. And so I wanted you to come on tonight and speak about being encour encouraged and speak about encouraging people today and being an encouragement to yourself, being yeah. encouragement to those that are attached to you. And just knowing that even though the year change for the calendar you know oftentimes we are already in what it is God wants us to do for the new year yes it's just a matter of you picking up the pace mm -hmm. you know it's just a matter of you being bold with it and walking with that power and the authority you know the mm -hmm. power and authority it's already in the inside of you yes yes you have the power inside of you and God gives you the authority to go for it so use that authority that he's placed in you to speak on your situation, speak on your circumstance and look at him for the impossible. Let's not limit him. Remove mm. those glass yes. ceilings, remove those brick walls, you know, go ahead and break through, yes. break through, break through, break through. Why? Because we're unstoppable with him, That's right. but we, but we got to believe that, right? That's so if right. you believe that yeah. you are unstoppable, if you believe this is your year of the breakthrough, I challenge you and I encourage you to just, you know, move forward. You know, whatever it is that you're needing done, God will connect you not just with kingdom people, but with the right person 
yes to do it right. you know we just have to be open they may not look like you they may not talk like you they may not dress like you they may not walk like you that's right right um but be open right. to what god is doing and how he's going to use you when we say surrender god i surrender everything and use me as you see fit yes yes as you see yeah. fit, he will make sure that you fit. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. So thank you so, so, so very much. I know the next um, <clears throat> tea talk is on Valentine's Day. So we're kind of up in the air. If we're going to do a tea talk that night, I think that we are. And of course, we'll probably talk about relationships and living our best life as singles. <laughs> Because a lot of times singles get like depressed on at Valentine's. And I'm like, that's an opportunity to get all the candy in the world, you know, <laughs> all the chocolate in the world. Like that's an opportunity for you to love on yourself and dote on yourself and yeah. enjoy yourself. You know, mm -hmm. we have to love the life that we're in. And while you're single, this is like the best time with God, so to speak, because you can just pour out to him. You know, you can spend all your time worshiping him. You can hang out with him. You can really serve. You know, I always mm -hmm. tell people that are single, that are not married and don't have any children. You can serve from sun up to sundown because you don't have any, you know, yeah. intimate family within your house oftentimes to run back to you. So this is your time to really be a servant unto the Lord. And this is your time to live your best life. I learned that anything that I was waiting until I got married to do, God was like, no, let me do this for you, mm. right? And areas that I was, you know, broken, God was like, no, let me heal you. You know, it's no such thing as a better half. You are a whole person. Amen. Being prepared for another whole person. <laughs> yes. Right? And those two whole people make a powerful team in the kingdom. If not, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> right. Amen. You're going to be in trouble. And we see that. We see mm -hmm. that I have a friend that does divorce cases. And she told me that, you know, they did like 500 divorces in 2022. Mm -hmm. And guess where all most of the divorces stemmed from? 80%, 80 or 90% of them stemmed from the people that got married during the pandemic. In 2020 and 2021, everybody was getting married and moving in together because nobody wants to die alone. You know, <laughs> nobody wanted to be alone, you know, when COVID hit and just doing property management. I mean, we made the most money in 2020 because people just started moving, 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 you know, and they established these relationships and established these marriages. And in 2022, when the world opened back up, they realized, whoa, I don't know if this was God. I don't know if I heard the God. I don't, I don't know if I even asked God, you know? <laughs> So we want to be whole in our singleness and live our best life in our singleness and know that if life is this great, boy, when I get married, then it shall be a cherry on top, right? <laughs> so I believe that we will be on here, um, but just stay uh, tuned to our social media. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube page, you do have a YouTube page out there and it is my name. Uh, tea talk with Tasha. That's the one good thing about the spelling of my name. I don't really have to fight for my, you know, name or change things around. <laughs> uh, so I thank my mama for that. I used to hate it. People used to say my name wrong. So I would just be discouraged uh, by the spelling of my name. And now I love it. It is authentic and it is me, you know? <laughs> so, um, but definitely subscribe to our YouTube page and definitely share if I've sent you a link to be able to register for the text alert, share that so that other people can register. And then that way, uh, for people that are not on social media, not on Facebook, not on Instagram, they can still receive the text alerts. And I am going to begin to drop uh, little tea talk nuggets in there uh, daily or throughout the week to encourage you all because oftentimes it's just a word of encouragement, but look up Joanna McGee on Facebook and on Instagram. Check out her, check her out on YouTube. She has very powerful, powerful speakers on her show, powerful testimonies that are life-changing. 
It was life-changing for them and will be life-changing for you. So I encourage you to connect with her if you're interested on how to write a book, if you're interested on how to do a show. A lot of people have reached out to me about, you know, doing their own show or doing their own YouTube and so forth or, or you know, setting up a network. She is definitely the person to reach out to you on how to produce a show or even if you're interested in doing a show on uh, Channel 57, definitely reach out to her. She is a wealth of knowledge and uh, she's been doing it for a long time. And so she is gifted in that area and just a blessing. So we love and appreciate you so, so, so very much. But thank you all for being on. If y'all have if there any more questions or comments for uh, Joanna before we get ready to uh, say our goodbyes tonight. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. But I thank all of you that have shared what you were sipping on tonight. I thank all of you for all the comments in there, all the hearts, all of you that are on Facebook. Thank you so much. Please share and like and send up hearts and so forth. I'm so very, very grateful. Uh, Prophetess Tanya, definitely check her out. Um, she has an awesome show that she does. I've known her for a while and uh, mighty, mighty woman of God and so grateful to be connected to her prophetess Ithaca's on here, grateful to be connected to her. And so I just love what God is doing in this season, in this hour. And Joanna and I will be doing a retreat this year. So definitely yes, uh, look yeah. for that information that will be coming soon. So I'm excited about that. So hopefully we'll be getting that out to you. So it's a lot of great things that are going to be happening uh, this year. Yes. Dana has a uh, clothing line out. Uh, if you go to her website, uh, The Vision is Written, you will see it. I ordered a, a sweatshirt for my daughter for Christmas. She absolutely loved it. Great quality. And it has amazing uh, scriptures and phrases on there. I know one says chosen. So we have to know that we are a chosen people. Amen. 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 And so beautiful sweatshirt. And I love what God is doing in and through her as well. So, you know, definitely um, connect with the people on here, you know, and uh, see how you can be a support to them. See how they can be a support to you, you know, in this season, make sure that you are um, having a prayer partner. If you don't have a prayer partner, reach out to me. I will be a prayer partner with you. You want to have a prayer partner. You want to have someone that you can discuss and share the word of God. You want to have someone that you can share and go over your notes for what you learned on Sunday. And if you're, you know, doing Bible study, but be around positive people, you know, people that are, are moving forward and what it is, you know, God is doing in the earth. People that when they speak, you feel life. When they speak, you feel alive. When they speak, you feel like they blessed you, you know, you want to have people speaking to you to where, you know, your spirit man leaps with joy. Like when Mary was speaking to Elizabeth, yeah. be mindful of how you feel when you get done speaking to people. That's right. It's important in this season. If they're not speaking love, if they're not speaking life, if they're not speaking encouragement, and even if someone's correcting you, they are to do it in love. Right. And you want to make sure that you're speaking love. Tone is everything. Right? So let's make sure that we're we're doing that this year, that we're checking on uh each other. That that's that's like major. Let's check on each other. Dana's good for checking on on me. <laughs> <laughs> and several of you are the least checked on me this week. You know, let's check on each other and encourage one another so i love it and so uh joanna you always a blessing dr beverly Patton, such a a woman of wealth and wisdom i look forward to hearing you this year and what god is going to be doing in and through you this year yeah yeah i'm excited yeah. i'm excited so i love you all so we are going to get ready to wrap up tonight um dana are you available to pray us out tonight Uh, sure. <laughs> She's like, I'm <laughs> off screen now. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to see me now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. Uh, thank you, Father, for this time together, yeah. Father, just to be able to gather virtually with each other. Father, yeah. we thank you that you are ever present, Lord. And so, Father, I just thank you for, for Tasha and Joanna as they have ministered um, yes. tonight to us, Father God, and, and, and the others that have chimed in just to share their testimony and to also yes. share wisdom. And we, and we just we just thank you for all the wisdom that was shared, Father. Let us not lose sight um, or, or take advantage of the fact that you desire to spend time with us. You desire to speak to us, to, to hear from us, Father. Let us be intentional with spending time with you without any time limits, Lord. Yes, Father, yes. let us be intentional with our thoughts, um, even with our words, Father God. Let, let it be a reflection of your light and let us be a reflection of your light, Father. As we prepare, Father, just to end our day, Father God, no matter what time zone we are in, Father God, I just pray that we end this day, Father God, with thanksgiving, Lord Jesus. And no matter what we are dealing with, Father God, or even the challenges we may be facing right now, let us know that you are greater than anything that we will ever encounter, Father. Let us surrender those things to you and help us to get out the way so you can do what only you can do. And Father, I just pray right now for, for a hedge of protection over everyone on, on the Zoom and um, those that are watching on other platforms, Father God. I just pray over their families, Lord Jesus, and I pray that you give us rest, Lord Jesus, the yes. sweet rest, Father God, a peaceful rest that only you can give. And Father, we just thank you again for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so, so, so very much, Dana, for praying. Thank you all. So I just appreciate you all. I love you all. I'm looking forward, you know, to just hearing what God is doing, hearing, you know, the areas where he's healing, you know, hearing the areas, you know, where he's just doing the impossible. So let's not limit him. And let's seek him. Let's just be intentional about, you know, surrendering our time to him, right? Surrendering our hearts to him and just allowing God to, you know, have his way. You know, mm -hmm. we, we will just be mm -hmm. so surprised, you know, like Joanna said, you know, when she started turning it over to him and releasing it to him, he just started moving, you know, and he wants to move. You know, we've just got to surrender it. He wants to move. So I love you all. I'm excited. You know what, Tasha, I want to say something to add to that too. Yeah. You guys, there, I had to go through a lot of surrendering last year. And when I tell you my life is so much more peaceful mm -hmm. in terms of those things that I was holding on to. Mm -hmm. um, because that stuff starts to consume you. Yes. It starts Oof. to consume you. It gives you anxiety. You're constantly thinking about it. You're trying to control it. Yes. And, but once you surrender it into the hands of Ooh. God, yes. it's the safest yes. place that it could ever be. And there's yes. just so much peace in that. So yes. much peace yes. in that. Yes, it is. Wow. Surrender it. I'm telling you, no matter what it is, they're saying, amen, amen. God bless you. Yes, Lord. Surrender it. Surrender it. Surrender it. When you surrender it, you'll see all these other things things come you'll see the things that need to be removed or released or the things that you were worrying about mm -hmm. just float away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it'll reveal your heart too yeah. it'll reveal your heart <laughs> you know, the things that you have have put before God because if, if we hold on to things then that means there's something that that, that that thing or that person has become an idol to us you know Ooh. when we mm -hmm. when we are not willing to surrender it to God wow. there shall be no altars altars mm -mm. Mm -mm. no no there shall be no altars yes wow there's that song uh dwell dwell here whatever i put in your place remove mm -hmm. it and you dwell there mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. yes i love mm -hmm. that song i love that song awesome worship song so yes be intentional about the surrender god i'm giving this to you Amen. And it's it's hard, you know, because some of these things we like, some of these things we love, it's it's hard. Mm -hmm. But like she said, it reveals your heart. And we want our hearts to be pure. We want our hearts to be pure. Yes, Lord. Well, I love you all so much. Y'all have a good night. Mm -hmm. May the peace of God just be in your homes tonight. Mm -hmm. I love you. And just be upon you, but definitely uh, follow uh, Joanna, look her up on Facebook so that you can hop on when she goes live with your encourage, encouragement for today. 